Hello everyone. Thank you for regularly tuning in to Pure Science. Your support means a lot. As you know, we do not have content behind the paywall just yet, but we would be really grateful if you could subscribe to the print also on our YouTube channel as well as on our website because journalism like ours is possible only through your subscriptions and help. This year spells a bit of gloom and doom for the third pole of the world. The Himalayas, the entire mountain region, has seen no snow in the peak of winter. The Himalayan region has suffered a dry October, a dry November, dry December, and now, so far, a 100% dry January. There might be snow later this month, but the current situation is still a very, very big deal. Not only is there no snow, and therefore the number of snow days in winter has also come down, but the overall average temperatures have also climbed, obviously, and this is both during the night and day. Who is really surprised? But the consequences are in fact more dire than we think with a dry Himalayan range in the winters. This entire winter season has been deficient in rain for the northern parts of the Indian subcontinent. According to IMD, January has now seen a 100% deficit in rain and we already know through multiple studies that there is variability both in terms of time, quantity and there is variability spatially when it comes to the changing Indian monsoon. The precipitation over the subcontinent has been changing in its patterns and normally snowy slopes this time of the year are bearing the brunt of this effect of climate change. Tourist regions like Gulmarg, which are known for their white blankets of snow on their ski slopes, have all asked guests to cancel reservations and go back because there is no snow. Apart from tourism, this of course also affects the local ecosystem there, including affecting rabi crops that are grown this time of the year, especially wheat. Now the Himalayan region, especially the Alpine region that starts at above 3000 meters above sea level and goes on all the way up to 4500 meters above sea level, these ecosystems make up the Himalayan mountain range's cryosphere. Cryosphere is ice ecosphere. Himalayan cryosphere holds the second largest volume of ice after the Arctic and the Antarctic and therefore the Himalayan mountain range is also called the third pole of the world. But the subcontinent's famous mountain ranges are really suffering and losing ice. Some might remember last year in October when all of the world's ice started to turn towards the UN in desperation. There was another bit of a UN news in climate circles and that was the Secretary General Antonio Guterres visiting Nepal in October. When he was there, he made a public statement and very prominently said that Nepal has lost one third of all of its ice in the last 30 years. With each passing year, glaciers are melting at a rate that we have never seen before. It's 50% higher than what it was 10 years ago. It's 65% higher than what it was 20 years ago. It's 20% higher than what it was last year. These kind of numbers are the ones that we are faced with when it comes to ice melting in the world. And on top of all of this, there are regional variations that affect precipitation and snowfall. In these winter months, the single source of rainfall for the Himalayan regions, these storms are called western disturbances. They originate in the Mediterranean region and they flow over the Mediterranean region, over Caspian Sea, over the Black Sea, through the westerlies and... These storms carry moisture from this extra tropical setting directly into the upper atmosphere. Regular tropical cyclones transfer moisture in the lower ranges of the atmosphere. But these cyclones move moisture in the upper parts of the atmosphere. And while this entire system moves towards the Indian subcontinent and it hits the Himalayas, it falls down as precipitation. These storms only move from west to east with the westerlies. And in the northern parts of the Indian subcontinent, including Nepal and Bangladesh and Bhutan, these extratropical storms that come from the Mediterranean region in the form of western disturbances cause the non-monsoon precipitation in this month. And the rabi crops such as wheat really depend on this precipitation. 
Apart from this, there is also El Nino that is causing warm and dry conditions in the subcontinent. And this year has seen one of the strongest El Nino phenomenon ever, is what experts say. But even though the El Nino phenomenon of warming itself is natural, the lack of snow currently in the Himalayas is not. Even during severe El Nino years previously, there has been snow. There are already consequences with fruits and orchards and wheat and crops. And what happens next is also a bit of challenge. If these kind of patterns repeat, of course, we are going to start seeing changes and problems, not only with tourism and the movement of people, but also with food security. This will, of course, extend to ecology and environment in the Himalayan regions, which will have cascading effects over the rest of the subcontinent. It is cold right now in the Himalayan region and the cold is expected to continue for a few days. There might be some rain or snow in a week or so, but we are not yet sure. The amount of winter dryness also increases the risk of forest fires. It increases dryness in the soil because there's no snow melting, so there's no humidity and moisture. And this exacerbates forest fires. Later, if it then rains in February, if the weather is not cold enough, it will lead to flash floods because the water will not be able to freeze into snow or ice. So at the end of the day, we are already over halfway through January and the rest of the season is not really looking good for the northern part of the Indian subcontinent. Unfortunately, there is really no takeaway here, except that things are actually going to get much worse as time progresses. The effect of the Himalayan weather and the impact of variability in the Himalayan cryosphere will be felt not just across India and the Indian subcontinent, but eventually throughout the whole world. <laughs>